you take a photo before then? Is that so when you get home you can get the 784 killed over? Amazing. I'm just happy that you're thinking of me while you're touching yourself. That's absolutely. Right. I will. Hey? I will. Thanks, Neil. Don't throw you back out though, eh, mate? I'll be careful. I mean, can tell if it's a spasm or just a fucking yeah. Good. Right. Are we all good? Good, 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 good. Um, so you've come to see um, Percy, and he's fucked off, isn't he? Has he gone? Yeah. What a cunt. Percy is a cunt. Percy is a cunt. Na 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 na. Percy is a cunt. Percy is a cunt. I'm videoing this. I'll send him that later. But what, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll do it from an anonymous account. That'll really fucking go. <laughs> Just, just the audio. <laughs> oh dear, are you alright, love? You've got a very innocent face. What's your name, love? Rachel. 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 You're not innocent. She's not innocent at all, is she? No. What's your name, Rachel? No. The fucking just. Teaching. Only Emma was like, yeah, you two, and you, you fucking, and you. What do you fucking, what a set of line print. 13 weeks already, and you can't even fucking speak up. What do you teach? Psychology A-level. Psychology A-level. What a fucking waste of time that is. <laughs> okay, now, psychology. At A-level. 17 and 18 year olds don't have any fucking clue. And I don't think you're going to, no offence, I don't think you're going to get them any more closer to a clue, are you? Because, like, there's no 17 year old out there going, oh, what I really want to do is psychoanalyse something. No. <laughs> fucking and drinking and drugs, that's all I want to do. And knife crime. That's. <laughs> Your students are lovely, are they? Really? I bet they're all fucking psychopaths, aren't they? <laughs> or sociopaths, or narcissists. I d does anybody know West Yorkshire? I'm from a place in West Yorkshire called Dewsbury, uh, home, home of 2008 celebrity mum and Karen Matthews, that's yeah. where I'm from. And I, I was in, um, I was digging in a town near me not so long ago, a place called Morley, which is on the outskirts of Leeds. It's very much, when the BNP membership was leaked years ago, Morley had one of the highest concentration of BNP members, it's one of those towns. And uh, I was walking to my gig from the cash point, and I had two young ladies, they must have been about 18, came out of the chicken shop, right? And what I overheard was one of them saying to the other one, anyway, I had to bin him off because he's a complete gaslighting narcissist. And I thought, she doesn't know what gaslighting or narcissism is. She's just heard that somewhere in one of your fucking classes. <laughs> uh, just because he disagrees with you doesn't mean he's gaslighting you, love. And no, you didn't leave the gas on, or the lights, or anyone. Um, good. Are you single? No. No? no. Married? No. Fear for him. Fear for him. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do? What he's fucking told. That's... <laughs> what does he do? He works in prison, making number plates. Is that <laughs> Why have you committed that crap? Just to get a fucking break from Rachel, to be honest. Uh, keeps fucking sitting me down and doing raw shark tests. Not everyone knows what they are, but I do. So that's good. You know the ink bots where serial killers see the mum or whatever with an axe. Um, fuck me, I've never talked about that on stage before. <laughs> I'll just tell you a bit more about, I know I was talking about fatherhood and like, I'm writing a show. Uh, this year was a big year in our house. Because my son, right? I've got two kids, Fred and Rose, they're wonderful, right? They're, uh... Oh, yeah, they're fucking great. He's a hell of a gardener. Um, um... <laughs> anyway, Fred, he's 14, right? And we were on holiday, we were on holiday, and he came up to me and he went, Dad, can you buy me a razor? I thought it was going to be self harming, so I was like, yeah, fine. But no. <laughs> um, he, um... He said he wanted to start shaving, right? Now, he's 14 and he's quite fair haired, right? He doesn't need to shave, right? But he was, his top lip was getting a bit bum fluffy and he was like really bothering him. And so eventually I caved in and we're like, right, okay, I'm going to the laser. And then we had one of those milestone kind of father son bonding experiences where I had to teach him how to shave. I did used to shave. I don't, I shave my head, but I don't shave anymore, obviously. Um, and uh, I had to teach him how to shave. And 
you know, I'm trying to think what are the important lessons to teach you. So I said, like, right, you need some, first of all, you need to make sure you've got a sharp razor. If you've got a blunt razor, you're gonna cut yourself to fucking shreds. Right? Sharp razor, decent shaving gel or shaving foam or whatever. You know, you want to make sure you're nicely lubed up for it. Um, get the room. You what? Calm down, baby. Okay, thanks for that little interjection, Neil. Um, if, in future, shall we just agree that if I want your help, I'll go out and kill myself in the street. All right. Um, good. Um, so since you want a sharp razor, you want good shaving gel, get the room nice and steamy, open your pores up, right? And then the key thing is, to take your time. Don't rush, right? Because we all know chaps, don't we? I said to him, if you rush, you might cut yourself. And if you cut yourself, you'd be amazed how much you bleed if you catch one of your bollocks. Right? <laughs> Funnily enough, I did say to him, why are you shaving your balls? And he said, it's from one of his teachers. Um, I don't know what that's about, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <That's a drama. laughs> Neil's piping up again, good. I can't help it, mate, sorry. Yeah, no, you can't help it, mate. Your disability is not being a gobshite, is it? It's your back. It's your back. Just, you know, sit there, think about your bad back and your pip and your benefits. Sure it's <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Do you like ducks? Yes. I'm going to tell you something, this is something that happened the other day, I've never spoken about this on stage before, you might not find it funny, but if you don't, it's fine because the headline accident got to come on to fucking silence, so, no <laughs> um, I was at the pub, right, a couple of weeks ago when it was still sunny, sat in the beer garden on the pub, I love dogs, I've got two dogs, right, sat in the beer garden on the pub, right, and it's by a road, and I heard that, that horrible sound of brakes squealing, and then a thud, right, and a dog whining straight, I thought, fuck. Right, so I ran out in the street, there's an Afghan, right, in the road, right, I thought, fucking hell. Scooped up this Afghan, ran into the pub, right, and I went, is anyone in here a vet? Are there any vets in here? And this guy sat at the bar on his own, right, he stood up slowly, he went, yeah, I am, mate, yeah. And he said, can you help, can you help? And he came over, and he knelt down by this Afghan, and he looked him up and down, and he, <laughs> he, went, he went around, right, and whispered something in his ear, and then, like that, broke his neck. Right? I was like, fucking hell. I said, mate, you're, you're a vet, did you have to do that? Or could you not, could you not have helped him? He went, mate, after two tours of Helmand, I'm not taking a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and on that That's new, I've never done that one before, I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> I thought someone had got there before me, but no, they were just laughing about a dog having its neck broken. That was, <laughs> <laughs> Are you all still well? Yay. Did any of you happen to see this year's Britain's Got Talent? Yay. Yeah, did you watch it? No, why are you here? What the fuck are you doing here? You're here all the time, aren't you? you. Can't you see me? Well, fuck off, no. Percy. <laughs> Percy. 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 Um, <laughs> so this year on Britain's Got Talent, your headline act tonight got all the way to the fucking final, right? And he absolutely smashed it. And it's great because I gigged with him before all that happened. And now I get to gig with him after it all happened. And I'm going to go to the back of the stage and watch it. And watch him do 20 minutes of the sheer filth that they wouldn't allow him to do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready for him? Yeah. Please give a massive Avery welcome for the fantastic Alex Mitchell! <laughs> Somebody recently said I look like a homeless Alan Carr, and I can't yeah. answer it. <laughs> Even fun of fact, that person was my mother. Okay. Where we are, where we are. My name is Alex Mitchell, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am queer, I am autistic, and I am disabled. So I'm all into more than, right, one fucking person, Preston, right? Inconsiderate bastards, you're lucky I'm out the house, yes. No, it's fine. I've got one cheer. The rest you did what other audiences do. I say I'm queer, I'm autistic, I'm disabled. And the audience, you look at me, and with your eyes you say, we've seen your shirt, we've heard your voice, we ain't fucking surprised. <laughs> 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 
I do not make it difficult for you people. Not at all. Not at all. I, 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 I have a disability called F, 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 um, That's not strictly true, there's only one F. Um, <laughs> uh, you, honestly, you can laugh, I'm taking your taxpayers' money. It's fucking brilliant, honestly. So, affects me in lots of ways, my disability. The most obvious way is the voice. This is my genuine voice. Um, Contrary to what the Daily Mail wrote about me after Britain's Got Talent, uh, this is my voice. They someone started a petition claiming that it was fake and that I should be removed from teaching. How fucking mental is that? That's crazy, isn't it? Right? Um, but yeah, this is, this is my voice. Also affects me lots of other ways as well. I have a posterior tremor in my hand just like that. Hence the beard. It's a shaving zero out of ten. But um, hand jobs. <laughs> Yet to be reviewed. Anybody interested? Uh, no? Okay. okay. I'm a single queer man. Is there any gay men in tonight? Yay. What for? <laughs> Just me. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. Even, even if you were. If you were a single gay man, this would still be a wasted journey. Okay. Um, that's why I do this shit. Why else would I be impressed on a Thursday? But I'm lonely. Um, my disability affected me in lots of ways. My disability affected me in lots of ways. Um, fact, like many people, when I was diagnosed with my disability about 18 months ago, the first thing I did was I googled the things I'm not supposed to be able to do, right? And top of the list for me is I'm not supposed to be able to drive, right? I'm not supposed to be able to drive, right? Unbelievably though, I think six months after that, I did all my lessons, passed my test, and now I drive to all my gigs. Okay, uh, fucking two fucking late guys, seriously. <laughs> Like turns out Preston hate the disabled. That's what he wants. Thank you so much. No, it's fine. It's fine. The fact that I'm allowed to drive, the fact that I drive is a massive achievement. But the fact that I'm allowed to drive can only be described by one word, and that word is um, immoral. Uh, I'm a terrible driver. Awful driver. Dreadful driver. I'm a terrible driver. No one's ever said I'm a terrible driver. But then um, I leave no witnesses. Right, that's me. That's me. Fun bit of context for that joke. I recently did that joke in front of Alex McPartlin. That's bold, isn't it? That is bold. He didn't talk to me for the rest of the day, generally. <laughs> Got a black box in my car, right? Black box. The idea was it tracks how well you drive so it can lower your insurance premium, right? And when I got the black box, it was really nice. It links up to my phone, right? And after every journey, it sends a text to my phone that it calls a helpful hint, right? Uh, like when I started driving, there were really nice things. Like I'd drive to gigs and it'd be like, oh, always pull away from roundabouts carefully. Always leave this. It doesn't say that. That'd be weird. <laughs> Being heckled by the Admiral himself. <laughs> it's it's so horror, if anything. Um, no, it doesn't say that shit. Doesn't say that bit. You get the gist. It's saying really nice things, right? But then recently I realised how bad a driver I am. Because I got home from a gig that is only 20 minutes away from my house, and the helpful hint that was sent to my home, from up to my phone, was as following Alcohol can seriously prevent the ability to drive. <laughs> my car thinks I'm an alcoholic. Right? So much so, it's had to stage a fucking intervention. Right? That's where we're at. Awful, isn't it? Dreadful. Um, disability also affected me lots of other ways. Affected my day job. For three years before I did this professionally, I left this summer. But for three years before I did this professionally, I was a teacher. Teacher for three years. I left this summer. I left just as the Tories left. What fucking awful time. That is dreadful, isn't it? Right? But I was a teacher for three years. And let me tell you, being a teacher, I was a teacher for three years. Let me tell you, I was not a good one. I was not a good teacher. <laughs> not a good one at all, right? Not a good teacher at all. I think I wasn't, I wasn't a good teacher for a lot of reasons, right? One is that, um, one is that I didn't care enough, right? Two is that the children scared me. Um, and I worked in primary schools. So that's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> and three, and genuinely this is true, one of my favourite hobbies is genuinely lying to children. Oh, <laughs> fucking love it. I cannot advise it enough. I was sent off for a lot of time with my disability. I had a lot of time off work. I became very ill very quickly. When I went back to work about six months later, one of my year four children looked at me, this beautiful seven-year-old boy, and he went, but why does it happen? And I said, because you didn't do your homework. <laughs> so I was on a disciplinary. Um, <laughs> But his five times tables were fucking amazing, guys. Like, that's much good, honestly. It's really 
worried actually when I went, when I went off. I was worried, particularly about the voice. I was worried the voice would make people feel uncomfortable, right? I was really worried that being out in public and sound, sounding like this, I was worried people would, would be put off by it and feel uncomfortable, okay? Very luckily though, very quickly, I realised that I really fucking enjoy making people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm fully aware that there's a comedian who looks like this race and gender wise. That is a bad thing to say. I fucking love it too. Like, I was on the bus. Right? I was on the bus shortly after I was diagnosed. Right? Started ticking and this old lady was sat next to me, right? I started ticking and this old lady, she got up and she fucking moved, right? And I thought, excellent. Oh, another victim. I was so excited, honestly. Because she moved closer to the bus driver, right? And I got off the bus before her. The plan is in motion, right? Because I got off the bus for my stop, have to walk, have to walk past her, still ticking, get to her, still ticking. And I just went, Hur! and she shats herself. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> I've not felt that good since someone's granddad had a half a second race. It was fucking brilliant, right? Loved it. So I wasn't a good teacher, is what I'm saying. Yeah, right? Not a good teacher at all. Not a good teacher at all. Uh, not, really, really not a good teacher. I think another reason I wasn't a good teacher, right, is because, like, I couldn't relate to these kids at all. Couldn't relate to the kids at school. These kids now have got so much more to worry about than I ever did when I was a kid in the park social media generation. They've got TikTok, they've got Snapchat, they've got all this shit to worry about. I didn't have that when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I needed to know three things to survive, right? That was it. And they were the three things I did know. Right? I knew how to cook one food, I knew one route home, and I knew the local paedophile. That was it. It's all the meters. <laughs> His name was Jerry. He dressed as a cowboy. It's just what we needed to know. Right? And school was completely different as well. School was completely different. When I was at school, the biggest thing you could do at school was the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. Right? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's good, right. So the Duke of Edinburgh, if you don't know, it's cool. What you had to do, you had to do a little bit of writing, right? You had to do uh, some volunteering, and then you had to go on an expedition, right? I carried a kayak across the Yorkshire Dales, right? We did all this so we could get a medal from Prince Andrew. Not Prince Andrew. <laughs> 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 Tell you what though, he would have saved a lot on air miles if he'd done that, wouldn't he? He would have done. No. We did all that so we'd get a certificate from Prince Philip, right? We, which is also wild, but like, we did all of that for the entertainment of a known racist. That's insane, right? We did all of this stuff for them, right? The thing with Duke of Edinburgh though, right, when I did it, right, it, was, it still is, it's all led by volunteers, right, and the volunteers who lead Duke of Edinburgh are fucking insane, right, all of them are, they're all, they're all unhinged, right, our volunteer, for I was with a group of boys, a group of seven boys, right, our volunteer was ex-military, he was fucking terrifying, right, he had massive arms, right, that's all I remember about him, really, he, had he looked like someone had, like, upturned an acoustic guitar, right, that's how big his arms were, they're fucking huge, right. He was a madman, right? And he was a volunteer for our group. And our group, there were seven boys in our group. Uh, getting a bit of context for you, those seven boys have all since come out as members of the LGBTQ plus community, right? <laughs> that is genuinely true. It is just coincidence. It wasn't Brokeback Mountain, right? <laughs> we were children. There's not bit too, right? Right? So we did, but we were all seven closeted homosexual boys, right? Seven closeted homosexual boys walking across the Yorkshire Dales. The volunteer we were given was genuinely called Mr. Batty. That's not fucking okay. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Dreadful. And Mr. Batty was insane. He said the most stupid shit, right? I remember one point we were walking through a field and he went, careful boys, because this is a cow field and cows are the biggest killer of men in this country. Well, that's fucking insane, isn't it, first of all, right? But then, to follow that, my wonderful friend George, who I'm still friends with today, he said single-handedly, the saddest and campest shit I have ever heard in my life, right? Because Mr. Batty went, cows are the biggest killer of men in this country. And George went, I'm pretty sure it's cancer. How awful was that? <laughs> dreadful, dreadful. I was born in 2000, right? That's the other thing. I was born in, I was born in 2000, right? So I'm trying, I'm trying, I've literally just turned 24 years old. I was born in 2000, right? Thank you. One person cheered my birthday. Just, happy birthday! That's how I'm thinking. Happy birthday! No, it's fine. Like, uh, the rest of you were surprised, weren't you? I'm fully aware I look a lot older than 24, right? You have to be aware of that when your face is 70% forehead, right? You just do, okay? That's something that happens, right? 
Um, so if we was able to born in 2000, it means a lot of things for me. One thing it means, I don't understand 50% of Graham's jokes, right? But the other thing it means for me, right? The other thing it means, now I'm 24 years old, I'm the same age my mum was when she had me, right? Which means now members of my family are asking me about having kids. Well, do you think you'll ever have kids? Do you think you'll ever have kids? Do you think you're ready? Do you think you're ready? To have kids? No, nope. absolutely not. I don't even like olives yet, right? <laughs> I'm nowhere near on red wine, right? It's not going to happen. I'm not ready to legally own a child, that's what I'm trying to tell you, right? The real reason I worry about it is because one of my biggest worries in life, genuinely, is that I worry people think I'm posh, right? I think that's a fair enough worry to have. I've got the face of a man who gives his dogs human names, but his children dog names. Right? <laughs> Like I've got Dave on the lead, but Broly in the pram. Right? <laughs> and I've got the accent of a man who's single-handedly keeping the red pepper hummus industry alive. Right? <laughs> it's not good for me. Right? So I worry people think I'm posh, and I particularly worry about having kids because the last thing I want is a posh kid. Because posh kids, they're the fucking worst, aren't they? Right? Like I was stood behind one of these fucking gremlins the other day. Right? And we're in a supermarket. We're in a supermarket, and he turned to his mum, and he went, "Mummy." What's for dinner? And she said whatever it was. To which he said back, oh no, not that. I'd much rather have the pesto gnocchi. What the hell? That is insane. What a vibrant meal for a child, right? It's crazy. When I was his age, we could only eat two colours, yellow and orange, and the orange was carrot. That's all we were allowed. I hate him. I hate him, I do. I didn't know what gnocchi was until I was 21. I called it ganocchi. I fucking hate him. <laughs> when I was his age, I knew one foreign food, lasagna. I wish you were dead, right? I fucking hate this kid. hate this kid so much. I hate this so much. Really do. And also, like, if I have kids, I don't want them to, like, I want them to be aware of my family's past struggle. Because my family have struggled, you know, my parents struggled, my grandparents struggled. I want them to be aware of that, you know? I don't want my kids to always think that avocados has been this widely accessible, right? I want them to know we've struggled, right? And my family has struggled, they have. I genuinely recently witnessed an argument between my mum and my younger brother, right? They were on the phone. And my mum ended the argument by saying the following. She said this, remember. My mother crossed borders so this family could have a better life. She put the phone down. And it's true, she did. She crossed one, she's from Swansea. Right? <laughs> and she ended up in Luton. So if anything, <laughs> she failed on the better life part, didn't she? <laughs> Gave it a go, our Val. Fucked up unanimously. That's what happened there. Bless her soul, bless her soul. When they, by the way, when they moved to Luton, right, they opened a corner shop, and it was great, it was lovely, the pillars of their community was amazing, right? But when they earned enough money from that, what they decided to do was follow their own passion, which I massively respect and it's amazing, right? And their own passion was jewellery. So my grandma, my grandma, like, they opened a jewellers in central Luton, which we can all agree is very fucking optimistic, isn't it? Yeah. It's like opening a Waitrose in Damascus, Syria, right? That's absolutely insane, right? People were mad, right? So I do, I worry, I worry quite a lot about having kids. I've got a lot of worries, I worry about a lot of things. I've, I've got anxiety and depression, the big two. Um, they're very much the ant and death of the mental health world, aren't they? Like, you never see one without the other. But instead of saying things like, you're doing great, they say things like, you'll never make your family proud. So that's, so how, yeah, it's my internal monologue, right? Um, I still really don't know. What's really annoying me at the minute, what's really annoying me is people with justifiable anxiety. Right? People who have anxiety for the right reasons, because that ain't my fucking level. Right? No, at all. Right? I was recently in Adster and I had a panic attack because I bought a three pack of peppers and didn't know what to do with the green one. That's, that's awful, isn't it, right? Similarly, a week later after that, I had a similar sort of anxiety-induced moment in a Mexican fast food restaurant. I called my therapist and described it as a panic attack bell. She was not impressed. <laughs> We're 17 minutes in, that was the first proper joke. You've got to get on board now. You've got to get on board now, lads. My therapist does give quite good advice, but it annoys me, right? Because she's quite expensive, so I can't always afford to see her, right? So recently, like she said, recently she said, to combat your anxiety, you need to find something that you really, really enjoy, and you need to try and do it at least once every day, right? I thought about it, I thought, yeah, well, fair enough. So I've been doing a lot of gambling recently. Um, <laughs> I've not seen her since, but I imagine it's something she'd endorse, right? <laughs> 
That's not the only thing she says to me. She said, you need to try and look after your physical health better. That pissed me off. I didn't like hearing that at all, because that's effort, isn't it? But I did start trying to look after myself better. My real worry is trying to look after yourself better, is I think the minute you start trying to look after your body, is the minute you stop being cool, right? And I didn't have much to work with in the first place, right? But I do think that's true, I do. And I can prove that, because I genuinely now look at a full fat yoghurt in the same way that I used to look at, Cocaine at house parties, right? Where I'm like, ooh, I shouldn't. That's awful, isn't it? I still end up face down in it. It is a problem. It is a problem. My mum was in the other night. She did not like that joke. So it's going to be a challenging Christmas, so I'll be honest. Harder than last Christmas. Last Christmas is rough. Last Christmas, I'm not very good at buying people because of my autism. I need to, someone to, to tell me what they want. So I had to mum went, what do you want for Christmas? And she went, oh, just get me anything, anything. I went, that's not, that's not helpful enough. I need, I need to tell me something. And she went, okay, just, uh, just get me something for the bathroom, something for the bathroom. I was like, still, still, not, still not good enough. And she went, yeah, it's just get me something for the bathroom. And she walked out. Christmas Day comes around. She opens a seven pound toaster from Argos. She did not see the funny size. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Problem. <laughs> the real reason my anxiety is so bad, right? It's a slow burner. Uh, <laughs> she was in the bath as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, did that on the spot that day, didn't uh, <laughs> Sometimes you impress yourself on this job, right? Don't play up the night off now. Um, so it's. <laughs> The real reason I think my anxiety is so bad is because for years I've not felt like I really fit in. And doing this is quite, is heightens that quite a lot, right? Because doing this, I represent quite a lot of communities, right? Well, I don't often feel like I fit into all of them, right? I don't just represent the queer community, right? I don't just represent the disabled community. I don't just represent the neurodiverse community. I also represent a community that's very close to my heart and I think is grossly underrepresented in the arts. That community is, of course, um, the lads. Oi, oi! Yes! <laughs> We can all agree I am absolute lad, can't we? You'll notice this is the lad walk. Um, so I am very lad, very lad. I am. I do things that all lads do. I'm very lad. I do things all lads do, right? I like pints. I like football. I've never had sex with a woman. All things lads do. All things lads do. Right? Very lad. That's genuinely true, by the way. I am a big football fan. I am a huge football fan. Right? Love football, really, yeah, really. My dream is I'd love to go see the men's team at a major tournament. I would. Because a few years ago, I got to see the women's Euros when they were in this country. Brilliant. I watched the Lionesses bring it home. Fucking fantastic. Did anybody else go to any of those games? That's why they're paid 70% less. So you're, you're part of the fucking problem, guys. <laughs> Can't all be heroes like this guy, right? I loved it. I loved it. And the women did so well. So now I'd like to go to a men's tournament. I'd love to go to a men's World Cup, really. I'd love to see the men do well at a major tournament. I'd love to see the men win a major tournament. The issue with that is the chance of the men's team winning a major tournament is sort of the same chance as the BBC not employing nonces. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like it's bound to happen at some point, <laughs> but not yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> We thought we were safe with you, didn't we? Brace yourself, I'm going there. <laughs> we did, we did. We thought we were safe with you. Also, brace yourself again, that was my favourite news story of last year. Stay with me, right? I'll tell you why it was. It's because they announced it on a Sunday night. They said a high-ranking member of the BBC has done all this stuff. And we were like, oh, shocking. But they didn't tell us who it was until the next Friday. So for a week, as a country, we were playing paedophile guess who. It was fucking brilliant, wasn't it? Like, we were having such a good time. Like, it was fucking great. And we had a similar thing this year, didn't we? We had a similar thing this year with Where's Kate Middleton? Remember that? That was fun, wasn't it? People were like, she'd gone missing. Someone was like, oh, I think she's a... What the fuck's going on back there? Hello? Just, I thought we just assumed we just had some big royalists in. That was all they said. Yeah. Um, no, we, we had a similar thing this year with Where's Kate Middleton, didn't we? we were like, she went missing for a bit, and someone was like, oh, I think she's split up from Prince William. Someone else was like, oh, I think... Someone claimed to have seen her in the Bahamas. That was wild, right? Like, and at the end of the week, she came out and announced she had cancer. And she really ruined the game for everyone, didn't she? Um, I, like, I like an awkward sigh to a laugh. It does, it does make me feel good. Um, so, uh, I'm a big football fan, as I was saying. I'm a big football fan. Like, I'd love to go to a men's World Cup. would love to go to a men's World Cup. The issue with that is, uh, I am a gay man. And the last two places the World Cup have been held are Russia and Qatar. Places where I am literally illegal, right? And that is 
awfully exciting for me. Oh, it is. I feel, it is, it is. I feel like Jason Bourne just with slightly limp wrists. I love it, honestly. Because how do they police that? How do they police gay? I don't know. I imagine they pull her over beside the road, they go blow into this, so. <laughs> We found the level, and the level is Botox. <laughs> also, like, imagine the cop chase in that scenario, right? It's just me running away from the police. I slide over car bonnets. My scarf trails after me. It's sexy. It is sexy. I do. Um, I would love to go to a World Cup. I would love to go to a World Cup. But back home, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big football fan. Back home as well, I'm a big Cambridge United fan. Fair play. <laughs> you don't know who the fuck we are. Let's <laughs> not, let's not pretend, right? <laughs> I don't know what you said, but I don't want to talk to you. Um, so it's, uh, big Cambridge fan, big Cambridge fan. I go to a lot of games, right? But I don't live very near Cambridge anymore. I live up north, right? So it takes me a long time to get to games, so I don't go to as many as I'd like. But I recently went to a Cambridge game, went to a home game, had to travel a long way, got dressed in the morning, had to get up really early, threw my big jumper all over my football shirt, got in the car, head down to the ground. And when I got to the ground, only then did I take off my big jumper. And only then did I realise that the last time I washed my football shirt was genuinely with my sequin jacket. Right? <laughs> There's been a bit of transfer, guys. So, so at this point, I am very much representing LGBTQ FC. That's where we're at. Okay? It's a problem. It's a problem because I get out of the car and the first away fan I see comes up to me and goes, What are you, mate? You fucking gay, you fucking gay, mate. And you are. And don't laugh at that bit. Jesus. <laughs> I already know you hate the disabled, right? <laughs> he hits me with the worst slur and he goes, are you gay, are you gay, are you a... And then hits me with the worst slur imaginable. It's awful, it's disgusting. And in that moment, I have two options, don't I? Option one, I call him out on it, it's disgusting, it's a word that should never be met for total contempt. Option two, I walk away, I try and defuse the situation, I try and get help. Unbelievably, I took option three. And I called his bluff and kissed him on the lips. Right. <laughs> So I was punched in the face. Um, <laughs> not good, not good. <laughs> okay. but I was really, really worried about it for a long time. It set me back for a long time, this incident of homophobia, right? It did. It set me back for a long time. And I was really worried about it. Really worried about how the world saw me and things like that. And then it took me back to a memory, a core memory I have of when I really had faith in humanity. And that's when I came out, when I came out to my younger brother. I was 16 years old when I came out, and I originally came out as bisexual, right? My brother was 13 years old at the time, three years younger than me, and I was really worried, I didn't know what he was gonna say. And I said, Dan, I think I might be bisexual. And what you have to know for this story is that LGBTQ plus education in this country is awful, it's shit, it's terrible, it always has been, right? So I say, I think I might be bisexual. And Dan goes, that's okay, mate, it's who you are, don't worry about it, no one's gonna think any different of you. I thought, do you know what? I was fucking, thank you so much. I thought, do you know what? That's fucking lovely. Like, we're still going to I went, Joe, that's lovely. She says, who you are, don't worry about it. But then, he immediately Googled if I could compete in the Paralympics. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know he doesn't think it's a choice. Uh, he doesn't think it's a choice. He does think it's a registered disability, right? <laughs> Then 18 months ago, I was diagnosed with FND. Now he's my weightlifting coach. How crazy is that? And then he ended me for the Paralympics. He went, yeah, we're gonna do the weightlifting. I went, what the fuck? I don't know how to do that. And you don't know how to coach me. He went, no, I know I don't, but I've got just the man. And he rang Mr. Batty. How fucking crazy is that? Uh, what else? Uh, thank you so much. You've been absolutely lovely, Preston. I'll be like, this. Um, I will try to make sure you love this in the next session now. Good night. I'm too fat to get through the crowd and get back to the microphone. Give it up for Alex Mitchell! I think he's just been followed upstairs by this slightly drunk lady that was there. Who spent all 20 minutes of his set cuddling me, rubbing my belly, going, he's fucking brilliant. Not listening to him, not listening to him, but telling me how good he was. I don't think she could tell you a word he said, but she did say he's brilliant. So um, that was lovely. Um, <laughs> 
She has definitely done that. I'm not lying. I don't tell lies. Um, I just, I wouldn't normally do this after a set, but he just reminded me of Alex. You know, he's talking about Hugh Edwards and the whole paedophile thing. And like, have you ever, have you ever played a Deadpool at work? Where you pick what celebrities are going to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I used to work, we we got bored of that and we played a game called a nonce pool. Where, where what you do is you predict uh, which celebrities are going to be outed as a paedophile or a sex offender in the coming year. And uh, it was a controversial game. Uh, one of my colleagues always had David Dickinson, because she said he's definitely thought about it, you know, from Dickinson's real deal. He's definitely fucking thought about it. Um, and uh, I got in trouble. Um, I nearly got sent to HR because I said, uh, Mr. Tumble from CBeebies. Yes! 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 yes. 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 Yeah. No, right, so, I just want to make it clear. I'm not saying Mr. Tumble is a paedophile. I have absolutely no evidence that he's... Justin, Mick, Justin Fletcher and me, I don't think he's, uh, no Ryan, evidence he's touched anyone. Ryan, but, Jason. but, no, yeah, that's true. Uh, but, right, Mr. Mr. Tumble, right, if he was outed as a paedophile, yeah. right, an awful lot of stuff would make sense, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? A lot of stuff would make sense. He's always asking kids if they want to see his spotty bag. <laughs> right? He's got a special language that only they can, they can communicate in. That's really groomy behaviour, right? And, and, he only hangs around kids that would find it really fucking hard to testify in court, right? So, that's my verdict. Good. Right, so, have you had a good night, Avery? Good. What's that sound? Oh, she's not touching him, but she's talking at him. Um, <laughs> at the top of the stairs. He, he looks like he's thinking about throwing himself down. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to save him, I'm going to film it. It's 250 quid went up and there, thank you Harry Hill. Right, um, so, you had a good night? Yeah. Good. Have you missed John at all? No. Who the fuck's John? He normally hosts it, he's a bit of a prick really. He's got a secret family, doesn't tell his missus, it's really got sordid really. Um, I don't know how he keeps one woman happy from knowing it, but, you know, apparently. Um, um, <laughs> yes, there was a micro penis joke earlier, well done, yeah, good. He's not coming on stage, he's not coming anywhere, no, John. Um, <laughs> can't get it up. Um, happens to us all. <laughs> what am I even doing? <laughs> It's not paying me for this bit, I'm on overtime, I'm paying now. Um, so, listen, October the 31st, Halloween, get back here, you've got a superb lineup. I mean, the host's shit, John will be back, but 